I want to share with you um, a dream that I had a couple of weeks ago. God gave me this very vivid dream. And um, I know it was from him because there were two words uh, which described the theme of this dream. Um, and the, the words were label or love. And I was giving a talk in this dream at church to a few people that were gathered around the front. And I was talking about going out in the town and seeing people that are uh, rejected by society. People that may be homeless or poor or um, got tattoos or whatever. But people that are generally rejected by society. So after I had this dream the next day, I, I just sort of um, sat and pondered on it. And uh, there were Bible verses coming into my mind as I, uh, as I uh, thought about it. The first one was uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Um, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. When I'm really close to God, I can go out in the town and I look at people with love in my heart. That I can't do this on my own. This is not me. This is God in me. This is if I'm really close to Jesus and full of the Holy Spirit. However, sometimes when I'm out, if I'm busy or uh, whatever, I'm rushing around and I, and I tend to, you know, I can ignore these people as well, um, which um, I think we're all a bit guilty of that. Um, I remember a time uh, about three or four years ago, it was winter time, and the weather was really icy cold, and uh, we had to go into town to get some shopping, and the, there was a wind, and it, it, as we got out of the car, this wind cut through my clothes, and through my coat, and right to the bone, and I was so cold, and I just wanted to do what we do, you know, do what we were doing, and go home. And then, as we walked from the car park, there was a homeless man standing in a, like a, a seating area. And um, I've seen this man before, his clothes were dirty and tattered, and he was just standing there, wasn't doing anything bad or anything. And uh, for some reason, I was really, really frightened of this man that night. I don't know why. Um, and so I, I sort of hurried on past him, but Chris stopped to talk to him. And, um, I had a, a little bag of pound coins in my pocket, it was all the money I had and we had to get a bit of shopping, so we went in the shops and got what we had to get. And on the way out, Chris said to me, go to that man and give him some money. And he told me how much to give him and he said, it will buy him two nights in a, in a homeless shelter um, because he won't survive in this extreme cold at night. So I reluctantly took this money out of my pocket. Oh, I don't really want to do this. I'm cold. I want to go home. And I could only think of myself. So I took this money out of my pocket and I walked it to the man. And as I handed it to him, he held out his hands and they were incredibly warm. And I put it into his hand. And I don't remember whether I said anything. This actually really happened, by the way. Um, I don't re remember saying anything. Um, but. As I looked in his face, his eyes shone. And that night, I actually believed that I met with an angel. Because angels are everywhere in all sorts of different disguises. Uh, anyway, uh, as we left the man to walk back to the car, I felt really guilty about how I'd been so insensitive to this man and uh, so selfish in myself. And I wanted to go back and give him some more money. But as I looked round, he'd gone. He'd completely vanished. I don't know where he'd gone. But anyway, I've not seen him since, but if I ever do see him again, I hope that my attitude towards him will be different. Um, I'm just getting the next sheet, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was full of remorse and I had to pray for forgiveness uh, and my selfishness and ins insensitivity. And, uh, if you look at Matthew 25, and verse 35 to 36, Jesus tells us, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. For I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. For I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you walked out of me. And I was in prison, and you came to visit me. In verse 40, we're told that when we tend to do, when we tend 
to one of the least of these brothers, we do this to Jesus. But again, in the same chapter, verses 41 to 45, we're also told that if we reject any of these little ones, we also reject Jesus. I don't know about anybody else, but that frightens me, and I would hope that I would never want to, I never want to ignore anyone again. In John 13, 34 to 35, we told of a new commandment given by Jesus. Love one another as I have loved you. Some time ago, uh, Chris made a statement one morning as we were talking about the Lord. He said, one kind act can melt even the hardest of hearts. And that statement had such an impact on me that I wrote it in the front of my Bible. And I look at it often just thinking about the consequences of actually putting that into action. Just one kind act. And it's amazing how the consequences can roll through. God can work through the smallest act of love. It's the little things that seem to have the most effect on people. Um, for example, if you've ever been in traffic and there's one lane merging into another and you stop to let somebody go, you find that the next person will stop and let somebody go. And um, this, it, it, it cascades into um, that small courtesy set off a chain reaction of kindness. And uh, the result is, everyone's happy. With this in mind, it's too that uh, love begets love and kindness begets kindness. I remember many years ago when we first became Christians, I heard a sermon that always stuck with me. It was about planting a smile. Have you ever tried it? I suggest you go out and do a little test. And the next person you see, just smile. And what happens? They smile back. Or most people do. Um, not in Yorkshire. Not in Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so after hearing about my failure, to do, uh, to show God's love every time. Um, we should tr try, go out and try to talk to the misfits, our homeless, our buskers, our beggars, or are they simply the lost children of God? Why not take time to find out about their story? Try and encourage them, talk about Jesus. But don't label them, leave them, ignore them, or just walk on by. Think about where, where you would be without Jesus in your life. The second part of verse, verse 8 in Matthew 10 says, Freely you have received, freely give. Remember, one kind act can melt even the hardest of hearts. Act in the so what will you choose? Label.